Hello, my name is Jeremy Gibson and I'm a graduate student at the University of Missouri, Columbia. And I'm standing here down at Research Park at the Botany Greenhouse, which is where I house a lot of my animals that I do research with. And what I'd like to do is share with all of you a little bit about what I do uh, at the University of Missouri as a biology graduate student. And it's starting to rain, so I think we're going to go ahead and take this inside. So we're inside the greenhouse, away from the rain, and I wanted to share with all of you a little bit about what we do here at uh, the Botany Greenhouse at the University of Missouri. Uh, there's a lot of researchers that share this greenhouse, everything from scientists that work on genetics of corn to scientists that work on frog communication. And right now, we're in the section of the greenhouse where we raise plants to teach students about plants particularly botany, is the course that's taught with the plants in here. Now that we've seen a few plants that don't have any bugs on them, let's go look at some plants that have some tree hoppers. So welcome to the uh, greenhouse area that holds Tylopelta gabbara. It's a tree hopper species that lives here in Missouri. And these animals are quite unique in that they communicate using vibratory communication, which means that when they talk back and forth to each other, they actually communicate by sending signals through the plant. So no matter how hard you try to hear this animal, if you put your ear right up to the plant, you're still not going to hear anything. It requires special equipment to listen to these animals, which I'll be showing you later in the lab. So this species, as I said, you can find in Columbia, Missouri. And if you're walking around some of the parks around Columbia, if you look carefully at this plant, this plant is called <clears throat> Desmodium canadensis, and you can find it all around the parks around Columbia. But these little tree hoppers are so small that most people don't even see them, and if they do see them, they think they look like poop. And so what I'd like to do is show you a closer view of them and so you can appreciate how beautiful these animals are up close. So here I've just pointed out what they look like. You can see that people could mistake them for, well, dirt or a piece of poop. But let's take a closer look. Here I can see three tree hoppers. There's one that's a little bit different in color. This one right here is a juvenile, it means it's a young tree hopper. The other two next to it are adults. But why don't we take a look at a different species of tree hopper that I work with. Well, now we're looking at a different species of tree hopper that I work with. The species that I work with here is Umbonia crassicornis, also called the thornbug tree hopper. Now, this animal does not live in Columbia, Missouri. It's a tropical tree hopper, which means that in order to get these bugs, they either have to travel to the tropics or I have to send or have someone send them to me. And you might also notice that this is a different plant. And it is. This is a tropical plant. Uh, this is a mimosa plant. And you'll find tree hoppers living on a variety, uh, this type of tree hopper living on a variety of different plants, but they're all mimosa type plants. And um, what's really cool about these guys is they also communicate using vibratory communication. And it's a bit of a game like Marco Polo. So when a male is trying to find a female, the male will call out and the female will respond. And the male searches the plant looking for the female playing in that game of Marco Polo. And uh, so we're going to go and see these guys up close in the lab and see how they communicate. Well, welcome to my lab. Uh, we're on the campus of the University of Missouri, Columbia. And as I mentioned before, I study communication. And here, this is where I do most of my work. So since I study communication, I have to be able to listen to these animals, which again, communicate using vibratory communication. And then I also have to be able to play back and talk back to them. And so what I'd like to do is just kind of take you on a tour of my lab and the equipment that I use so you have an idea of uh, how I conduct my research. So let's take a closer look. So here is a setup that I can use to talk back and listen to tree hoppers. So up above, I have two laser Doppler vibrometers. Basically, these are 
uh, specialized microphones, so they're able to pick up vibrations. The really neat thing about using a laser Doppler vibrometer, though, is this instrument shines a light beam down to the surface that you're recording, which you can, if you can kind of see this, there's a red dot shining right here. And anything that red dot is shining on, that's what we're going to be able to hear, which is really, really neat. I also use another type of recording device called an accelerometer, and that's positioned right here. And these two devices use two different methods, but basically they're doing the same thing. They're just microphones, and they pick up vibratory communication. Now in order to play back sound to my animals, or play back vibrations to my animals, I use these two devices here. They're called Piezo Stack Actuators, which are basically the same thing as speakers, except for the sound that they play back goes right to the, the stem that they're attached to. So like I said earlier, when my animals communicate, no matter how hard or how bad you want to hear them, if you put your ear right up to the stem, you're not going to hear anything. The same is happening here. We have to use one or two of these devices in order to hear what's going on on the stem. Let's conduct a quick little experiment. Does the laser Doppler vibrometer sound the same as the accelerometer? Let's listen. All right, so what do you think? Do the accelerometer and the laser sound the same? Could you tell a difference? Well, why don't we listen to it again, but this time I'd like you to listen very carefully to see if you can tell a difference between the two. So back to the question I asked just a second ago. Does the laser and the accelerometer sound the same? What do you think? Well, if you think they sounded differently, you'd be correct. So while both of these sensors pick up vibrations, they are measuring slightly different properties of the vibration, which makes them sound a little different. So why don't we use these sensors and the setup that I have here to listen and play back to a live bug? So if you remember, I mentioned earlier, when we were back at the greenhouse, that these storm bugs communicate much like the game Marco Polo, where one individual calls and another responds. We call this style of communication a duet. And so what I hope you'll hear is when we place a male onto the setup here, I hope you'll hear that he's going to make a call. We can never predict what a live animal is going to do, but I hope you're going to hear the male call, and I'm going to respond to the male using the female call, play back through those piezo stack actuators I mentioned just a couple minutes ago. But I also want you not only to listen to the male, but I also want you to watch him carefully because you might actually see the male vibrate his body, which he, which he does to create the vibrations that he sends through the plant. So you're going to hear the male call, hopefully first, and then I'm going to respond playing back the female signal. So let's see what happens. Wasn't that great? We heard the male call, and were you able to see the male as he moved his body that created those vibrations? Now the first signal that you heard be created was by the male. The second signal was me responding, playing like I was the female, again using those piezo stack actuators. So what I'd like to do now is share with all of you a video of a trial that took place some time ago, but it's directly related to the research that I conduct. So what I'm interested in is I'm trying to figure out how males use the responses of females to figure out where they are on a plant. And so I'm going to take a couple minutes and show you a video of a trial that I ran some time ago.
So in this video, we saw the male move some distance away from where he started. So in this experiment, the male received a signal, response signal from the female, and then he made a decision about how far to walk based on that information. So this is exactly what I'm interested in learning more about, how these individuals find each other on these complex things called plants. I'd like to thank you for joining me today at the University of Missouri and allowing me to share with all of you a little bit about what I do and research here as a biology graduate student. But before I leave you today, I'd like you to think about what I shared with all of you today and to see if it's changed your thoughts about how animals communicate in the wild. And always, keep learning and thank you. Robot.